Well, 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 my zers and zers, welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. It is a very dark and deathly f no, Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. That's it. That's the one that my calendar says right now. It's a Wednesday morning over here from Helsinki, Finland. I want to be wish you the best, the best, and the happiest, the happiest before we get into this one. We got a lot of things to talk about today, and in the last 24 hours, there actually has been significant things, even with Bitcoin going most more or less sideways, all world markets vertical, essentially, and that's going to play into the announced today, of course. So with that said, I'd like to wish you the best, the best once again. Uh, let's go into the Crown Chain application, which we found at app.crownchain.net, and it's free, and it's also going to get a major overhaul actually relatively soon might even be before Christmas, which is rather exciting. I've actually been looking into it and uh, it looks fucking slick as I lose my voice. Anyways, um, <clears throat> Jesus, man, there goes my voice once again. Uh, what do we see over here? Bitcoin dominance heading up a little bit more from a 63.5%, almost to a full-on 64% region, of which with Bitcoin knocking on the door right here, that does start to look like uh, altcoins in for a little bit more of a boo cake party. It's everyone's invited to, except for uh, altcoin Bitcoin pairings, which are getting absolutely fucking creamed, it looks like. Uh, we'll be taking a look at that today, actually, because there is a few th interesting things going on right now. Open interest also hanging around three and a half billion, actually, with Bitcoin testing the top side of the range. Now, more importantly, we need to be looking at this within the context of the current price action over the last like few weeks within this current range. And we did see open interest shoot up about half a billion to, um, from about uh, 2.9 to 3 billion to where we are right now, while Bitcoin price action does test the top side of the range, aka looking for a little bit of a bula ish bias based off that. And on top of that, we see the fear and greed index also popping up one point from yesterday to today from a 91. 292 and into the data tab we go where are those damn where are those damn cardinals barking off in this fucking cave or the parrots in the cave or what the f the coal mine yeah the coal mine cave <laughs> Coal mine cave parrots, whatever the fuck. Anyways, uh, what do we have over here? Okay, so we do see that uh, future still maintaining their their uh, their premium over spot price action. We don't really we we haven't really seen it increase too much this week, but it did increase quite significantly coming into this week, which is more important and does suggest that market makers or essentially just the market in general is looking for an upside resolution here, kind of pricing it in with futures. Looking at the fear and greed index still in the extremely greedy zone, and we can stay in there for quite some more time. Of course, still a warning signal, but not actionable in and of itself. So I, I, I always want to repeat this because um, I feel like people will look at the fear and greed index and immediately say, oh, that means down. Well, no, as, as you can see, we've been in this region for more than a month now, and it can certainly stay there for, you know, for, I mean, technically and definitely to be fair, but it's a warning signal and it's not actionable as its own signal. It needs to be combined with other things, aka price, pr price structure in some other market dynamics uh, before it becomes, you know, more more tradable in a sense, more executable. In that uh, in that case, we do see funny rate is still more or less on the uh, more or less on the inconsequential side here. Don't let the uh, graph fool you. It is quite literally just showing that most exchanges are actually at not point out one percent. We see OKX double that at not point out two percent, and uh, FTX a bit of an outlier here at not point out four. Nothing of that is uh, is anything out of the ordinary. Nothing of that is uh, is, is 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 damning. We are nowhere. Near that 0.1% region and more importantly we did actually see that yesterday but as we said it's really not until we see like you know multiple exchanges above that level I want to see like three or more realistically and then yes potentially looking for a, uh, a local hives actually that's been one of the more consistent signals uh, in it you know just in its uh, in its in its isolation anyways uh, with that said um, what else do is there any announcements that I have today uh, yeah I'll be on twitch later today doing some more cyberpunk so cyberpunk and Bitcoin great combination <laughs> doing a little bit of chart action in between uh, in between the gaming action uh, so you're welcome to hang out there if uh, if you happen to give a fuck if not all good I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna hold it against anyone or anything like that and into the charts we go so today I wanted to start off a little bit different with traditional markets the reason being because I think that traditional markets in general have been an easier chart to read and they do essentially set in the bias for well all world markets <laughs> and and what do we see in this uh, in this uh, in this structure right here we see a straight up fucking market once again we did say yesterday that Nasdaq likely to retest the prior all-time high and I'd say that pretty fucking close right there we got up to six uh, 626 and a quarter and prior all-time high is about six uh, 650 so close enough is close enough and with that it is gonna kind of play into the Bitcoin narrative here because Bitcoin while I've been looking for it to be mostly sideways and a little bit of downside testing into the upper eighteen thousand dollars region we haven't really gotten that so looking at this right here does make me kind of err more on the side of hey if we haven't really seen that breakdown which was not really even a breakdown to begin with 
because it was all within the context of all higher term time frames being bullish does essentially make the short term time frames well they're going to naturally switch around to be bullish as well so with that said nasdaq looking good here and of course spy futures looking good as well i'd be looking for both to retest the prior all-time high uh probably even maybe even today and likely um likely make new all-time highs before weeks end as we do see hidden bullish divergence or do we see hidden bullish divergence playing out here yeah we do except uh this one didn't identify but this low and this low yes so i'd be looking for an extension a little bit higher here back up to about uh just just a little bit past 3700 and probably does make new all-time highs on spy futures as we do see that likely uh, uh daily stokes will probably flip back around there so do hit, test the edge of the bullish control zone i want to check that on caretakers uh stc over here um i'll be putting up the the video for the stc relatively soon as well uh, it's technically already up on the site, but uh, but eh, eh, wanted to save it for Christmas. Nice little nice little present right there. Uh, but also want to get some other content out first and foremost. Uh, let's see. So yes, looking at Nasdaq right here. Yeah, if we actually do see any sort of a uh, daily closure above twelve thousand seven hundred. Uh, I'd basically be looking for a bit of a melt up once again towards uh, 12 9 uh, would be our sort of first targeted region probably a small pullback after that and then we can talk about further continuation on top of that as this does identify it as a bull zone consolidation so more or less good right now but uh, I do want to see that condition met and that very likely bode well for Bitcoin breaking out of this current range and you know not just testing 20,000 which everyone's got their mind's eye on but actually significantly uh, further than that in fact is what I'd be looking at right here so back into it over here um, you know, keep that in mind as uh, I also want to check, or actually that was uh, that was NASDAQ right there. Let's let's go check out E-mini futures because that's the one that we were just referencing and basically the same thing. Yeah, so back above 3,700, basically looking for new all-time highs up to uh, the next targeted region, about 3,750 for a short-term pullback and then probably further continuation on top of that. Remember here that we do have long-term extensions uh, on both NAS and SPY futures that would be pointed up significantly higher actually. The measure move pointed towards the two-spot extension at 13,139 it looks like um of which uh of which um well i mean we actually got the breakout on this uh weeks or a couple weeks ago i believe it was and so we're still in motion with that it's more of a long-term target obviously and that would be my next overall area to be looking for before the next sort of medium term pullback very likely so with that in mind i want to see what it looks like on spy as well yeah same sort of thing here except a little bit higher ultimately uh 30 38 30 ish region is where i'll be looking towards and uh the trend is your friend once again looking at the uh, weekly here too i believe yeah shaping up to be just a little bit of a uh, just a little bit of a stutter step and then continuation same thing on nasdaq again an easier chart to read here on nasdaq if you see last week's high taken out at 12,675 I'm just generally looking for a melt up once again on, on basically on all markets. And we do see that NAS is leading right now too. So I do think that this is just an, the easiest chart to read and that is going to carry on over into everything else. We're seeing rotational markets go out through throughout the whole fucking world basically. And I do believe that NAS is mostly leading this. Uh, as we can see, the tech sector is uh, is a big part of this. Where is, it, where is my XLK? XLK, where the fuck are you? There you are, found you. Um, both the tech sector and the financials kind of make up the bulk of, uh, of NASDAQ. And as you can see right here, tech sector actually Actually, ooh, just barely taking out last week's high here. But again, you know, this is more of a formality at this point. Uh, I'm basically bullish on this as long as it's above uh, 124 on a weekly basis. And we can talk about, you know, another big move up uh, towards the two spot extension here at 137 and three quarters. So uh, financials, obviously a big part of uh, NASDAQ as well. They're a lot more, um, a lot more under pressure, as you can see. So it's not necessarily the same chart here, but it's a tech sector that's basically putting the world on its backpack and, uh, and leading everything up. So how does this play into Bitcoin? Well, it basically Basically just sets in this bias here that I am generally bullish <laughs> and uh, and uh, you know while I have like I said while, while I have been looking for a um, should we go on this chart or this chart Nah, we can do this chart this is the one that we've been referencing most um, you know while I have actually been looking for sideways and uh, and probably test back down to like 18.6 or 18.7 uh, early this week the failure of Bitcoin to break down in the lower term time frames here is strength in and of itself and you know with the way that Nasdaq is looking I'd imagine that if we do see a especially take out the high uh, today or, or at any time really then I'd be looking for Bitcoin to follow through at some point in, you know relatively soon now in the short term time frames is there still a threat of a pullback oh, of course there always is we still have yet to confirm above the 
the critical level to the upside. We did hit the short term criteria yesterday. However, we did see the two hour delta closure above the 19350 ish level right here that did initiate the next test towards 196. But that did not imply a breakage of 196 just yet until and well until we actually get a four hour delta closure above there. I still wouldn't necessarily call it a break to the upside. But uh, everything's you know, at, you know, everything's threatening right now. So at the end of the day, I, you know, I'm, 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 I'm very conservative in a market like this. Um, because I don't think that, you know, I really don't think that it takes all that much to, to do all that much, but uh, it's still looking like an ascending triangle here, still looking like it's more or less constructive. I want to get rid of a few trend lines here because fuck, the problem is that they're all relevant. It's just, it's my charts are just starting to look really muddy here. Uh, okay. Yeah. I, I think that, I think that would be good as it is. And we'll just get rid of this one right here. And that's, that's plenty fine. And we'll just move this back. Okay. Get the fuck out of my face. All right. Nice one. Okay. Sweet. So yes, at the end of the day, still in ascending triangle still has the bullish bias on basically all higher term time frames. We're talking about daily, two day, three day, weekly, by uh, by month, monthly, bi monthly, and quarterly, all shaping up for some more upside long term. The question is on the short term time frames, do we get a pullback back down to the low side of the range first, or is it just blast through the fucking roof right here, right now? Well, if I'm looking actually, whoops, get, let me get that off. I'm actually looking at the uh, daily um then it looks like a blast to blast off right here right now looking at uh, daily stokes we see a fresh cross the upside as we identified i think it was yesterday or the day prior also rejecting getting out of the bullish control zone and we do see that daily rsi playing out that hidden bullish divergence uh and back above the exponential moving average right here as well so all of that is good and does bode well uh for the long term but i'd still <laughs> call me crazy man but i'd still be defensive against any sort of a test back down into the upper six uh, sorry the upper eighteen thousand dollar region um as uh, you know, things do look good here, but uh, you know how this market goes. It, it you know typically when it looks really really good, that's the time when you do get one of those uh, the old scam wicks. That's uh, what people like to call them. Uh, two day looking good as well. Closed a fresh one, a, fr a fresh little diddle last night actually. You know I wouldn't I wouldn't mind another move back down to the ten simple here, but I would look at that as an opportunity. And three days going to be closing tonight, and three days looking like actually continuation as it is breaking above the uh, uh, breaking above the last pl uh, prior closing highs. So you can see. So all of these do set in the long-term bias of, uh, you know, of an upside resolution here. Um, but like I said, I, you know, I, I really would still hesitate to call an upside breakout until we actually see a four hour delta closure at the very least above this critical region right here, or a daily close above 19 for, let's just call it 19 five. It's just easier to say right now. And, uh, and that'd be good enough for me. And then we can start to target the next sort of measure moves to the upside based off this ascending triangle right here, which would be pointed towards a two spot extension at about 20 and a half thousand bucks and you and you probably notice that these numbers have changed around a little bit i've been adjusting them as the at you know as this formation kind of uh, comes to fruition and this is the one that i'd stick with for now until we actually have until we actually have a breakout of the top side there's technically like not a you know not not a perfect way of doing this but right now i'm actually using the four hour to derive this one and it's still within the same region anywhere between about two twenty two thousand and twenty three thousand is where i'd be looking towards if and when bitcoin does break out to the upside i'd look for nasdaq to lead and then bitcoin to kind of follow you know probably rel you know relatively in tandem essentially um do we have anything else on the uh on the or uh, do we want to stay right here yeah let's go back to let's go back down to the four hour right here okay so technically speaking yes bitcoin very 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 close to an upside resolution right here however <sighs> As many people know, myself included, what's the best way to lose a shit ton of money? Long into resistance, of course. So I'd still like to see an actual break here. The way that I trade is that I actually do, uh, well, I pretty much always buy a test into support and, all, and I pretty much always sell a test into resistance. I, I would tell you straight up right now that I don't necessarily feel all that compelled to be shorting this area or that or that it doesn't necessarily uh, feel all that all that well. Uh, but of course, there's a trade on the other side for you know a multi-thousand dollar move. So things are, uh, you know, there, or sorry, there is plenty of opportunity within this market right now. I'd still, like I said, hesitate to be, you know, bullish into this region right here. But here's the thing, lower term timeframes are shaping up for a move. Uh, like today, actually, uh, extremely likely today. In fact, looking at four hour HVP, we are back down in the single digits for multiple reads in a row as uh, the moving average comes down, this, comes down on this as well. We do see that this has been an overall contraction phase. So our prior interpretation of this was correct, that this was likely to go on for a little bit longer, but we're, we're damn close there right now. Typically when these things get about 75% full, similar to like a volume signature right here in this formation, which is an ascending trunk, which is, in, which is basically has the exact same uh, formation 
situation. You know, you can see this uh, coming into an apex at uh, 31st of December, similar to four hour HVP. And that does imply resolution extremely likely, statistically speaking, when it's about 70 to 75% full. And we're pretty close to being around there. I'd say that that's maybe at most another two days away. So by Friday, I actually would expect a resolution on this. Um, not that expectations are a good thing to have as a trader, but uh, in this case right here, we see multiple points of confluence. You know, you're gonna see volume, you're gonna see volatility, and then you're gonna see formation. So that is usually the tri trifecta within this market. And uh, let the geometries do it for you, my friends. So looking at it right now, um, you know, could it spend a little bit more time going sideways within here and test a little bit of downside? Yes, I do still think that's possible, but well, with the way that NASDAQ's looking, I'd still have an overall look to the upside. And uh, with that said, let's look at our lower term time for momentum oscillators and see what they are suggesting right here too. We do see four hour Stokes doing what? Actually looking for across the upside. Let's see what, uh, let's see what the four hour um, uh, STCS say about this. Uh, that would, oh my God, they're really squeezing hard right now. So we, yeah, very likely we do get a move today actually. Um, and four hour Stokes will actually pop back to the upside if we do close this next four hour dollar above, thir uh, sorry, 19,371 and 91 cents on GDAX. So that will, that will very likely be um, uh, what's called uh, confirmed by the time that I uh, push out this video and uh, in two hours and 19 minutes and 16 seconds to be fair. But uh, would that be enough to actually, f uh, you know, break out to the top side? I'd still want to see an actual break of structure, but it really starts to look like, yeah, Bitcoin does want to take off from where we're at right now uh, instead of playing out a down, you know, you know, a little bit of a pullback to the downside first. Um, looking at four hour RSI, what do we see right here? We see bearish evidence, we see hidden bullish evidence and the and it actually hits it both right. Nice one. And and, uh, continues up and up and onwards here, but not too actionable as it is right now. I don't have any other uh, critique on that. What about the three hour? Three hour Stokes already there, popping up, looking good. Three hour RSI, what do we see right here? Potential three drives of bearish divergence. So this is why I do still maintain a little bit of a downside short-term threat, but again, that downside short-term threat likely does turn into long-term opportunities. That's that, at least that's the way that I'm looking at it right now. And you know, if things do want to break down here a little bit on the short-term timeframes, I'd have the same target as yesterday, back down to about 18.6 or 18.7, and uh, and likely play off a bounce right there. Same thing on HVP. We're seeing the same sort of contraction phase going on. And uh, all momentum oscillators are pretty much in line with each other as it is right now. Buy hourly already getting down to literally zero reads and single digit reads. So we are looking at a move relatively soon. Buy hourly stokes, what are we doing? Popping down right now. But I'm curious what the structure would kind of look like right here as far as the ST STC goes. And it does have this as a bull zone consolidation and we will turn momentum back onto the upside back above 19,440. And that would likely be get another test back up towards 197 ish region back up here. So everything working together right now. Um, and by hourly RSI, constructive sideways probably does come down a little bit more. But uh, but overall, you know, uh, this is an uptrend right here. You know, it's kind of hard to fight the trend right now. And looking at the hourly, what do we see? We do see actually we do see a little bit of a flip flop here uh, angled onto the downside for hourly stokes. But this is all coming down while Bitcoin price action is sideways and up. That's a bullish reset as far as I'm concerned. HVP doing the same thing, saying uh, suggesting that we are going to be looking at a move probably today, um, probably today. Uh, so I do think that this week is going to be uh, actually a very interesting week. Uh, probably by Friday, I would, uh, you know, I'd, I'd, at, at the very latest by Friday, I'd be looking for a break here. Um, anything else on the arrow that we should be aware of? No, not really. So let's move on to the 12 hour and see what we got going on over here. And what do we see? We do see 12 hour stokes. Ooh, hinting at a little bit of a cross the downside. I'm curious what CMEs look like in comparison. Yeah, still nice and angled to the north side here. It is going to be fulfilling this trend line, but also that does imply that it's going to have a chance to actually break this trend line on the next tick, it looks like. So keep that in mind. I'm curious what would be needed as far as uh, caretaker suggests right here. And yeah, a close below about 19.2, that would do it. And that probably does be getting another test back down towards that uh, 18 6 18 7 level and then I want to see things come uh, pop back up from there but for right now I'm sure a lot of people are gonna be talking about this and say but crown we have a gap my gap my gap needs to be filled crown fill my gap just pull my fucking trading legs apart and fill it up with some cells well I actually got my fucking gap filled yesterday I went to the doctor and it was 
awful. It was fucking awful, man. I'm telling you. I went to the doctor, and what did I get? I got fucking molested. <laughs> it, was all, it was the worst. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. Um, <laughs> that's maybe a story for another channel. I didn't No. <laughs> all right. I really liked it, and I can't wait to go back. And it's like, come on, doc. Get, that, get those gloves ready, because my Angus is nice and peppered, and stick her right in. No fucking lube this time. Jesus Christ. Like, they, they literally use no lube. It's ridiculous. <laughs> hey, doc. I can run to the fucking sex store real quick right now. No, they got it in stock too. Anyways, um, <laughs> where the fuck is sacred crypto, man? That that guy had me in tears earlier today. Just like reading some of his comments. Jesus fucking Christ, man. We have we have some absolute characters in the Discord. Um, <laughs> oh dear God, what is my life? Uh, okay, so uh, I did want to go through CMEs really quick here too. Uh, what are we looking at right here? Four hour stokes down, three hour stokes down, bi hourly stokes down, hourly stokes down. <sighs> yeah, I, I still do think that there is a short term threat to the downside here. I actually do still think, yes. still think that. Yes. What's up? Yes. Elsa's happy. Nothing. Thins don't ever get happy, by the way. Uh, anyways, okay, so we got all of that. We got all of that. <clears throat> Wow, that's great. Okay, so uh, now now we can talk about actual stuff that matters. All right, so, <laughs> you know, again, I, I do still think that there's, you know, a little bit of a short-term downside threat here. I, I don't have an opinion on it, though, as to whether it actually plays out or not. I mean, with the way that the higher-term time frames are, are looking, uh, Bitcoin can break here at any moment in, uh, at, you know, any, any, moment, uh, any moment in time. Um, short-term time frames, though, a little bit frothy to be fair so so what i mean it's basically the same thing as before you know it's not all that helpful which i apologize about but this is typically you know this is typically what we do see with uh with bitcoin and just in just all major assets when you do see consolidation like this i just kind of bored you to that a little bit but uh the general the general trend is your friend here and i'd still be looking for an upside resolution overall the question is do we get a short-term downside move and I think it's possible. I, I just I don't really um I don't really have a natural uh, uh, proclivity towards that. So I'd I'd kind of just I'd I'd kind of just ask or I'd, what I'd say is is this is not financial advice. I'm not financial advice. But the relevant thing to maybe do is is to ask uh, you uh, if you know you know as a trader are you concerned about short term moves or are you concerned about long term moves and then you know kind of backwards engineer your strategy from that because in this case uh, it might not be worth it to be looking for a little bit of a short term downside move um, if you are more long term minded and vice versa for the other side as well so you know as always everyone everyone has a different trading style and in this case um i am uh i'm still happy to wait a little bit but uh but i am also holding a little bit long as well so i guess i, I guess I, I guess i should have full transparency there as well anyways um okay so if we are looking at cmes things do suggest that we actually do come back down and, and tag at least low 19,000 uh 19,000 bucks but <clears throat> Again, things are strong right here, man. They're strong. Anyways, uh, 12 hour. Did we get this already on CMEs? Yeah, looking good. Playing out the hidden bullish divergence. I'd say that that's, well, well, to be fair, I'd say a good amount of that's already played out on a, what is this, like a more than, more than a $1,500 move, so not bad there. Uh, what about on a daily on CMEs? What do we see here? Again, looks very good on CMEs. Looks like it could very easily break. I would not mind to move back down towards like 18.5. Oh, that's right. I didn't I didn't finish my whole fucking gap thing before talking about my asshole getting wrecked. Um, <laughs> you know, you know, it, what 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 kind of gap is this right here? Technically, this would be a professional gap or an example of potential professional gap. The reason being because we're once again testing the top side of this range. And if we do see a breakout of the top side of this range, I would not expect this to ever get, maybe not never get tested again, but not for a very long time. Um, so that does mean that as long as we're below about 19, uh, 550 resolution point, still possible, yes. But uh, the second that it breaks above, you can look at this as like the next basin area. And that's going to be the next probably uh, even major opportunity as well. But it's not happening for a long time, very likely. Um, okay, anything else to be aware of right here while we're here? Looking at daily uh, daily stokes for CMEs. Yep, popping back up as well. Looking good. What about buy daily? Popping, buck, pop, uh, popping back up as well. Actually using the critical zone of support, which is actually rather good. And uh, three-day, eh, coming down a little bit, but 
Is this one closing today? No, it is not. It closed tomorrow at uh, 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. So no comment there. Too early in its little dildo life to make uh, anything of. Let's go check out MicroStrategy. I'm curious what they're doing right now. And yeah, it was similar to what we said yesterday. Grind out the 21 exponential moving average and then probably flip back around here. Um, I'm not bearish on this chart. No, this is shaping out to be reaccumulation on a higher low. Problem is your higher low structure comes all the way down towards, well, Jesus Christ, comes down like another 100 bucks. So... <laughs> So you got a little bit of waiting to do before the trend actually does switch around to not being your friend over here. Just looking at the extremely short term time frames, I'd be looking for this one to go a little bit sideways here and then pop back up actually to towards uh, 330 ish region um, in line with the rest of the world market. So again, more or less things are bullish here. Of course, if we go reference Dixie, it's, it's straight down once again. I believe we did say this on the Forex video yesterday, short term downside, and I'd still be looking for that 90 and a quarter target to get hit, of which getting pretty damn close, but it still does imply a little bit more downside, which is naturally going to benefit Bitcoin and anything that trades against US dollar as well, because, well, that's the way that it works. <laughs> Anyways, go check out Mr. Beaterall and see what we got going on over here. Where are you, Mr. Beaterall? Where are you? Where are you? There you are, 583. Um, Mr. Beaterall looks like he wants to have a little bit of short term downside. So if I am referencing the altcoins here, then yes, I would be I would be favoring still a, another test towards short term downside uh, for Mr. Beaterall. That would be about 567, 565. Uh, and I'd be looking for a bounce there as well. Daily Stokes still looking good though. Rejection of the bearish control zone, daily RSI. Same thing, constructive sideways looking okay, but uh, would imply some downside moves. At the end of the day, who decides direction? Likely Bitcoin does rather than Buterol. However, I would like to reference this, and as it was brought up in the Discord earlier today, the Bitcoin pairing is looking absolutely abysmal for pretty much all alts, including Mr. Buterol right here. We did say full retraces coming in from this area right here, and I believe that we're still looking at that. I mean, drooping down like this is not a sign of strength in any way, shape, or form. This is incredibly weak right now, and this is even a descending triangle on this uh, what would be a bull trap rally. And that will have a measure move to the downside, actually. I'll just briefly do one right here, like not anything too too crazy. And uh, that'll be pointed down towards about 2,800,000 Satoshis, uh, assuming that it does break. So what would that imply? Basically, if Bitcoin breaks the upside or the downside here, I'd be looking for Buterell to, to fill that target. And seeing as that is actually looking like it does want to break to the downside, that does likely bode well for Bitcoin breaking to the upside as well. You know, when Bitcoin starts to trend, that's when the altcoins are no longer your friends. Not that they really ever <laughs> truly are, <laughs> but uh, I'm curious what like an XRP BTC looks like full retrace going on right here again you know <laughs> why expect anything to change after years and years and years of the same this time's different except it's actually not <laughs> except except it's kind of not actually um what about uni btc same shit full retrace all the way down what about uh cardano versus bitcoin is this going to be a full retrace as well no yes it is actually <laughs> looking very shitty here as well so all rallies fail and down into the crypto abyss we go um so that's uh that's that's that that's your that's your altcoin mark right there that does make me um a, again look for an upside resolution to bitcoin as well if they're going to go for the four retraces what does that imply P implies bitcoin is essentially in the pr in the process of trending and uh in this case right here a a continuation of trend would be to the upside of course so <clears throat> kind of wrapping this up or let's actually go to the secondary charts here first spy futures yeah i'd be looking i'd be looking for to test back up to the top side trend to ban here nasdaq futures same shit, even stronger. <laughs> what about Bitcoin? Do we see anything of uh, of note here? Again, looks more or less fine. I I, I would seriously not mad. I, I would seriously not mind to move at all down to you know eighteen seven or eighteen six. Still with be within the context of this and still you know look like a looks like an uptrend, a reaccumulation phase. But uh, but 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 it is it is knocking on the door. What about our what about our other tools over here? Yeah, here's what I want to see next. MACD. I want to see a MACD cross the upside. And I want to see it actually break above that 19.5 pivot. If that happens, I'd be very, 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 very comfortable calling a breakout to the upside, targeting those moves into the $20,000 region and probably beyond. We do see DMI plus is dominant right now. ADX is not strengthening though. I want to see that turn up as well. If we see both of those things happen with the MACD and the ADX, and uh, then, uh, sorry, then I would be looking for an upside resolution here. I'd look for a quick test up to the top side here, which actually would actually which which would actually be 20,100, and then continuation on to our next long-term targets. Uh, at 22 and 23,000. So 
fair enough. A lot of things, you know, a lot of things forming themselves right now, but still want to see, we we'll still want to see the last uh, few pieces of, uh, of, of confirmation here. Um, it's more of a question of, of, of when, not necessarily if right now, although I'm starting to get in some bad habits with, tr with, uh, with TA and trading, kind of like interpreting a move before it happens, but things do look more or less good here to be fair. Looking at the two day, looking at the three day, Again, I, I don't have any major issues with this uh, with this price action right here. So back onto the regular charts we go. Uh, let's start to um, let's start to to chart off the lower term time frames, perhaps. Or actually, maybe we maybe maybe we start to uh, wrap this bitch up, and we'll just chart off the lower term time frames right there. Okay, okay. Let's see. How do we want to do this? Let's go to a fresh chart. Uh, let's go to this chart right here. And do I want to do it this way? Nah, nah. Yeah, let's go to this chart over here. This one's a little more fresh. All right, well, let's wrap this bitch up. Bitcoin is still working on an ascending triangle at the at the highs, a bullish reaccumulation formation. Of course, that just gives it a natural probabilistic, or sorry, uh, let's let's start this one over again. As I do draw this out, and I can't talk. God damn it! Not not time for plates right now. For fuck's sake! Give me five five. Give me two more minutes, please. <laughs> No, seriously, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Alrighty, so uh, let's wrap this bitch up. Bitcoin still working on its ascending triangle at the top side of its range, a bullish reaccumulation formation, not necessarily always destined to give it the inherent, the uh, sorry, the inherent likelihood to break out the upside, but it does, it does give a natural probabilistic uh, narrative to break out to the upside, usually about in the upper 60%, lower 70% um, from our, from, uh, from, um, from, 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 bleh, from, I can't speak today, man. Fuck it. It's over now. <laughs> Let's wrap this bitch up. Bitcoin working on its any triangle at the top side of the range, bullish reaccumulation formation at basically new all-time highs essentially, and that would bode well for the Bitcoin bullets. Still want to break above the, still want to see a break above the top side of the range at 19.5 on preferably a daily uh, to confirm this one, and then we can drive targets based off of our extensions over here towards the uh, mid 20,000 or sorry, uh, let's let's go to a higher term time frame for this towards the uh, 22 to 23 thousand dollar region right here in line with the two spot extension and also in line with the with the um with the uh measure move from this ascending triangle all pointed towards about the mid twenty two thousand dollars region with areas of interest along the way the one spot 272 and the one spot 414 that'd be twenty thousand four hundred and twenty thousand eight hundred respectively and again still the same sort of resolution points with that however uh on the short-term time frames is there still a threat of a short-term pullback here yes absolutely um however looking at the world markets generally speaking i'm going to be more or less bullish uh nasdaq making new all-time highs this week would be very good very good for bitcoin as well as they typically do seem to follow each other or more or less bitcoin following nasdaq so i would be looking at that one to kind of give the general bias if we do see that high taken out you know I'd basically be looking for Bitcoin to follow over time. Uh, as it is right now, though, can we chart off the lower term time frames? Absolutely, yes. And we can use, I would not use the same resolution point that we saw yesterday. That trade's already played out. So congratulations to the one who took that. But now what I'd do is actually raise this level up right here and use 19.1 as a short term time frame pivot. If Bitcoin does come back down and close a four hour, especially, but even even a two hour, yeah, even a two hour gets this one as well below 19,100, I would look for that next short term move back down to about 18.6 or 18.7 and I look for the next bounce there. If 18.6 or 18.7 does fail, I would look for a full-on test down to the bottom side of this rising trend line, which is marking off the higher low structure as it is right now. The only way that I really get bearish on this price action is if we come back down and make a lower low. And where's our last higher low? 18,000 bucks, even on a daily. So if we do come back down there, close the daily blow there, then yes, I would look for an actual reverse. And we can talk about, you know, multi-thousand dollar moves to the downside. Not necessarily looking for that to happen. Again, referencing NASDAQ, referencing SPY, I do think that is just more or less likely to kind of float its way up. The question is, do we get a pullback first or, do, or does Bitcoin just green deal its way here? If I'm looking at short-term timeframes, it does suggest a pullback first, yes. So I'd still be saying the same shit that I've been saying all fucking week with looking for a little bit of sideways and down action. But uh, hey, at the end of the day, Bitcoin's a lot closer to breaking to the upside than doing even that right now for the short-term downside move. So fair, you know, I, you know, am I playing that downside move? No, I'm actually technically a little bit, uh, well, I'm, te I'm technically long right now to be fair. So with that in mind, basically the same things as yesterday. We do have very well-defined ranges here. It's more or less question of, 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 of when, not if right now. And uh, with that said, I'd like to wish you the best, best, and the happiest, happiest. Take care, and until next time.